Hi, I'm Bill from CJ Pony Parts. This 68 Mustang Coupe is known around here as CJ Pony One. This was the first Mustang purchased by the owner of CJ's. It was a catalyst for this company starting over 30 years ago. This car has been restored a few times over the years. And to me, it's one of my favorite Mustangs to drive because it embodies everything that's great about a classic Mustang. And it's just a really nice cruiser that makes all the right noises. If there's one area of this car that could use a little bit of work, it's going to be the brake setup. While this car does have disc brakes on it, they're manual brakes, and a cruiser like this, power would be a really nice option. So today, we're going to convert CJ Pony 1 to a power brake setup by using a brake booster conversion kit from Master Power. This brake booster conversion kit from Master Power is available exclusively here at CJ Pony Parts and will fit your 1967 through 1970 Mustang with an automatic transmission. This will work with either a disc drum combination or a four wheel disc setup. It is not designed to work with a four wheel drum car. It's going to include a Bendix style 9 inch booster, dual ball master cylinder with a 1 inch bore, and the correct style disc brake pedal, along with all necessary hardware for installation. For this installation, you'll need a 3 8 ratchet, half inch socket, 9 16 socket, 15 millimeter socket, 7 16 wrench, half inch wrench, 9 16 wrench, 5 8 wrench, drill, pilot bit, 3 8 drill bit, saw, flathead screwdriver, needle nose pliers, flashlight, marker, and safety glasses. We're going to begin the installation by removing all the original components. That's going to include the master cylinder under the hood, the push rod, the brake light switch under the dash, and the pedal itself. We're going to start by unbolting the master cylinder. That'll give us more room to work underneath the dash to get it disconnected from the pedal. Unfortunately, there's no way to get up underneath the dash and film properly how to remove the brake pedals. We're going to show you on the table. It's pretty simple. What you're going to do is pull the factory cotter pin, and I'll like to get the brake light switch and the push rod off the pedal. Once you remove them, remove the upper nut and bolt, and you can remove the pedal from the car. With the master cylinder disconnected from the firewall and the brake pedal separated, now we can remove the lines and remove the master cylinder from the car. One of the brake lines at our master was damaged in the past. What we're going to do is replace these lines when we replace our booster. So we're going to take the lines off down here at the distribution block. The master cylinder out of the way, the last step in the disassembly process will be to remove these two bolts here. Now the firewall is clear, there are a couple modifications that have to be made before we can install our new brake booster. What we're going to have to do is drill out these two holes here to get rid of the threads because there's going to be studs now instead of bolts. Do the same thing with this hole up here, and we have to open this up just slightly up top here. You don't have to concern yourself too much with this cut. It doesn't have to be absolutely dead on perfect because it's going to be hidden by the booster when it's installed. You just have to have enough clearance in the firewall to get everything through. What I'm going to do is take a marker and just draw a rough line where that lip is, and then we're going to cut it out. And that's it for the modifications to the firewall. Now the last step is going to be to drill one additional hole. Right down here you'll see a small dimple. What you want to do is use a pilot bit, make a hole first in that dimple, and then open it up to the same size as the other ones. Once we drill the holes, we're going to put our master cylinder assembly down into place with our booster. Just want to make sure everything fits. Make sure it lines up, all the holes are good. We're good there. Now we can take it back apart. What we'll do is we'll bench bleed our master cylinder. 
The bench bleeder master cylinder, the first thing we're going to do is remove the master cylinder from the booster assembly by removing these two nuts. And then you want to put the master cylinder into a vise. There's a couple different ways you can bench bleed your master cylinder. Master Power provides this syringe. Basically what this would do is you fill each of these up with about half fluid. And you're going to force this in while blocking the other port and force fluid through it. That will do it as one way. For me personally what I prefer to do is fill the master cylinder up. We're going to block both ports off then use a screwdriver as a push rod to push the fluid through. Let's put a screwdriver where the push rod would be and then slowly push it inward. You see bubbles coming out through the fluid. Basically what you want to do is just keep doing this until it gets much harder to push in and you have pressure. And get to the point you don't see many bubbles coming back through. It starts getting nice and firm. We're ready to reinstall in the car. Okay, with it properly bled, now we're going to put it back into place. Make sure you don't forget the mounting gasket. And get it in place and have someone hold it for you. Install the nuts on the other side. Here you can see our original manual brake pedal versus our power disc brake pedal. So obviously it's a major difference. The pedal is pretty much the same up to here where your push rod is going to mount. You notice this is much lower. On the pedal support under the dash is going to be a hole that's going to be higher up. That's where you're going to mount your power brake pedal. If you have a 68 through 70 Mustang, there's going to be a 3 8 hole already for this mount further up on the pedal support so you're ready to go. If you have a 67, chances are that hole may not be there. You'll have to remove the pedal support from the car and drill a 3 8 hole before you can mount the pedal. In car assembly, once the pedal's there, it'll be the same as well as when we took it apart. Put the push rod into the switch. Put the whole assembly on here. And install the pin. It did provide a cotter pin. I actually like the original style a little bit better. You may have to lower down the pedal support to get the bolt started for the actual pedal assembly. If you have to do that, remove these two sheet metal screws with one here, one either side of the pedal support. And what you want to do is lower down the column loosen up these bolts, you'll have enough play to get it in. Once you get everything buttoned up under the dash, now we can connect the hard brake lines between our distribution block and our new master cylinder. Because the master cylinder did move forward a few inches with the addition of the booster, you are going to have to re-bend the lines a little bit to get them to line up properly, but get them bent right and then bolt them back down. The last step in the installation process is to get vacuum into the booster itself. You only need at least 18 inches of vacuum for the brakes to work properly. Master Power provides this fitting to go on the back of your intake manifold. But in the case of our 68, this car has an automatic and air conditioning, so it already has a fitting on the back with an open port that we can plug into. Okay, that's the vacuum on the back of our manifold. We're going to fish it over to the booster itself. Basically find the best way to route it so it doesn't get in the way of anything. You also don't want to make sure it doesn't kink anywhere. Okay, once the vacuum line's installed, the next step is going to be to bleed the brakes and your installation is finished. Beautiful day out today, and I can't think of a better way to finish off its installation than by taking our 68 out for a ride. Power brakes work absolutely perfectly. The pedal's nice and soft, stops really well, works exactly as it should. Really was a nice upgrade for this car. Depending on the condition of your brake lines, the insulation, I'm going to say, is probably between three to five hours. I mean, it is time consuming. Working under the dash is tedious. There's not a lot of space under there. You may want to upgrade some other things while you're at it. So I'd say give yourself the better part of an afternoon. And like us, you'll be back on the road in no time.